Hello and welcome to today's live chat. I don't think this is working. Is this working? Yes, it is. Sorry, it is. It is. So, sorry. <clears throat> I'll start again. Hello and welcome to today's live chat, which is coming to you from my motorhome, which is parked in a place called Mikoshevo. Mikoshevo is at the, um, almost at the estuary of the Vistula River. It is here that there is the first crossing point of, of the Vistula River, although here it is done by ferry. And if one wishes to go across, then one waits for the ferry to turn up, one pays, I think it's 20 water, which is about four euros, just, uh, in fact, it's just over four euros uh, to get across. And in a car, oh, it's Four your uh, four water if you want to go on foot or five for you with a uh, bicycle or forty indeed with a motorhome and if you're really uh, extreme then you might have to pay two hundred to take a, a heavy foot oh, sorry <coughs> sorry I have an allergy the allergies have been worse this year than any other. year well for my case since well five years it was pretty bad as well but I think that's due to where I was. So, um, in um, if you look at a map, uh, you can see. And if this were a normal video and, and a one I'd actually, rather than me just uh, talking, I would actually put a map up at this stage to show you the um, borders of the Free State of Danzig as they were um, in the 1920s and in the 1930s. The reason I decided to uh, took this uh, topic on as a um the subject for this live talk was I thought well as I am here and as I'll be spending the next couple of weeks in Gdansk and uh, therefore that's a good reason to actually do it um uh so that that was the reason I was actually thinking of doing something ever brought brown uh um but uh, the the videos I did on her diary but uh, to do a little chat but anyway I didn't didn't actually do that one so uh, at the end of the First World War, there was a decision was made to actually recreate Poland. And part of this was that Poland had to have access to the sea. Now, before Poland was carved up by its three neighbours, Prussia, Austro-Hungary and Russia, in the 19th, 18th century, uh, it did have a sort of access to the sea. In fact, it had a, a sort of two accesses to the sea because it was uh, with uh, it was linked to Lithuania, and um, it also had via uh, here in Gdansk uh, access to the sea as well. Now, Gdansk as a uh, as, as a country, uh, sorry, as, as a, as a city, has changed hands various times. But uh, to, it would be fair to say it's roughly 50-50 the time it was uh, either Polish or, or, or similar, uh, as was German or similar. In fact, it was only German from 1871 until 1919. Um, before that, it was part of Prussia and um, various things uh, before that. But of course, what happened in the past is no guide to how things should be at present or indeed uh, um, uh, how things should be in the, uh, in the future. Dennis asks, is he late? Not at all, Dennis. I've only just started. I started less than four minutes ago and most of that was just a... Um, just a little chat. Um, I wasn't getting to the point there. And... Um, so the idea that one can say a town belongs to a certain country or, or, or doesn't is therefore um, somewhat hard to accept. Now, in, um, uh, in, in the interwar period, I saw something last week out in the, the uh, Stuttgart concentration camp museum there. There was a sign up saying that around 14% of the population, 939, was Polish. When we say German, I mean um, German speaker as a first language. When we say Polish, I mean Polish speaker as a first language. It doesn't, it is not a reflection of the nationality. And that makes me to be made absolutely clear. In um, in July uh, 1920, there was a 
um, a referendum, a plebiscite in the Masurian Lakes district, the southern part of the Masurian Lakes, which was an overwhelming victory for Germany. And the reason for this was that even those who spoke a form of Polish, uh, or if, if not Polish, because with languages also it's hard to, 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 to say what the, what the language is in some cases, uh, decided to vote in favour of Prussia or East Prussia because they didn't like the idea of these Catholics from the South um, taking over. So that uh, it was a lot to do with that rather than saying, well, because I speak whatever Polish, therefore I want to be in Poland. So that is not necessarily uh, the, 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 the case. Um, so, um, Sorry, there are comments, but I'll, I'll sort of get onto them um, as 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 we as we progress as we progress. Now, the um, the in the nineteen twenties and nineteen thirties, uh, there was a uh, parliament, and there were elections to that parliament, and uh, the only place where the Nazis ever won a victory was in Gdansk. Um, this, uh, in Germany, uh, they, that their best showing was in June 19, uh, July 1932, and they got about 37% of the vote, which is, um, which is similar, in fact, to what many, uh, many uh, um, people, what many parties get to form a government uh, these days. Um, okay, it would be depends how many opposition parties there were. Uh, in November uh, of uh, 1932, they only got 30, uh, 32 percent, and uh, the elections of March 1933 can't be can't be included because they were uh, faked or falsified. And they weren't falsified. Uh, they weren't fair because of the fact that the Communist Party. Uh, wasn't allowed to stand, and even um, social democrats weren't allowed to stand, and the police and the SA were walking around picking people up and beating them up uh, together, so that that wasn't a fair election. Hitler came to power in Germany as a result of political machinations uh, by the establishment elite. So uh, Oscar Hindenburg, the son of the president, the president was probably too far out of things to know what was going on. Um, von Franz von Happen and Hugenberg, who was a newspaper magnate, uh, the Rupert Murdoch of the day. So, uh, of, of Germany, that is. So, uh, but here in, in Gdansk, they, 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 the Nazis did come to power uh, in the Gdansk chamber um, legally, and they did genuinely win the elections. Um, the uh, later elections may have been slightly falsified, uh, but all the same, it would appear that they did have popular support uh, here. Now, to go back in time, the point of making Gdansk was to make a port for Poland. Gdansk had been part of uh, Poland in the past, and it, if it was to have access to the sea, then it needed that it needed to have a port. Indeed, during the Bolshevik War, of the communists, uh, they, they were in Poland and the uh, Soviet Union were, uh, what was to become the Soviet Union, uh, were at war. A strike happened in Gdansk by uh, probably communist uh, trade unionists who refused to unload uh, weapons supplies. Uh, for Poland. So therefore, as a result of this, uh, Poland uh, decided to, the Polish government decided to build its own port. As a result of building its own port, um, what would the traffic that once went through uh, Gdansk now started to go through Gdynia in its place. This uh, in turn resulted in uh, poverty uh, as well as for, for those living in Gdansk, as well as major costs for the Polish government itself. Um, so um, this in turn uh, becomes therefore a self-fulfilling prophecy in a way that the, the, the German uh, speakers in Gdansk felt that they were being badly treated by the Poles. Now, 
if it's a trading, it, with, if your main industry in anything goes, there's a knock-on effect all the way down the line. So when the, they stopped producing cars in Detroit in the 1980s, that knocked out the people who were um, renting, um, I don't know, <laughs> what do you read there? Uh, video cassettes or something like that. Um, it, it just knocks the entire line of the economy out. And this was one of the effects. The uh, uh, construction of the port of Gdynia caused massive unemployment. Uh, in on that large unemployment added to this was already the effects of the uh, depression of the uh, early 1930s so therefore in my opinion the success of the nazi party being the anti um allegedly anti-establishment party um that created the um, environment. It's strange that those parties, and this is something today as well, which claim to be anti-establishment, are uh, more pro-establishment than everybody else. That's the way it seems to happen. Uh, but that's just a little political comment on uh, um, what uh, what's happening uh, uh, today. Now, if you look at a map, of uh, the way the free city looked, you will notice it's divided in two. And I don't mean just the, the city, but the whole the area of the free city, because there's a large part of it was countryside. And the reason I mentioned Mikoshevo, where I am right now, was this was the crossing point of the Vistula. It didn't have a bridge across the Vistula. And the Vistula here is pretty wide. Uh, in fact, uh, it's what I mean, looking at it now, quite directly in front of me as I speak, I have to say it's about, what, 300 metres wide at this point. Here, incidentally, it's not actually the river. It's it's a canal because the canal was open in 1895. The final three kilometres was built uh, so it would come out into the sea at a different place. So it didn't go through the centre of the city. So it was the first canal was built to take it away from the centre in 1840. And the second one, this, this one I've got in front of me right now uh is uh, is from 1895 so uh and the um uh so i'll answer some of the no i won't answer questions yet i'll come back to that um i think one of the problems with the creation of the free city of gdansk is that uh, the people had no loyalty to a free city they had no sense of identity of being now we often see little uh, local nationalisms in many places i mean in germany there's a strong for example barbarian uh, amongst other places uh, uh, germans uh, as, as, as well as uh, many other nationalities are uh, very regional um, to a certain extent in Italy, even though Italy was united in the 1860s, you see a certain amount of regionalism um, as well. Uh, I also sometimes feel, I feel it in certain areas of Spain and, of course, in, in the United Kingdom. Indeed, the United Kingdom, we had a referendum on Scottish independence in 2014, and it's likely to be another one, I think, before long. However, I've never heard of anybody saying, I am a Danziger. Uh, I, um, they, 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 this, there was no sense of this whatsoever. Not only that, there was clearly free movement between uh, Gdansk and uh, Germany. Not because, uh, not through goods, goods that went from one from Germany to Gdansk had to pay uh, customs duties as they did if they wanted to get into Poland. So there was no freedom of movement in that way. However, um, and this, of course, also created problems for local businesses, but uh, people actually moved from one place to the other. And indeed, the uh, best known um, Nazi in Gdansk is uh, Martin Foster, and he was from Fort, which is near Nuremberg, uh, nowhere near Gdansk. So, and, and many of the other the, the lead, um, people who were in the parliament here weren't locals. They were, uh, they were from... Um, other places uh, in, in Germany. Um, in fact, obviously, Gdansk was really deep inside Germany when the First World War broke out. Now, the question is, uh, okay, before doing that, I'll comment the question as well. So, Robert writes, it was German and the outstanding infrastructure was created by the great Germans, irrespective of what happened after 1939. Uh, well, not entirely, because um, infrastructure as uh, and uh, housing, uh, the city layouts as we know it today, largely 
we look at a city, it's normally from the 18th and 19th century. Why? Because that was when cities started to get planned. Before then, there wasn't any planning in most in most places. They just put things up. A planning permission, I believe, I might, I might be wrong on this. I, I can remember reading an article on it when I was in Spain. But planning permission didn't actually exist in Spain until 1976. I might be wrong on that, but... Um, this so when you see a city what you normally see is the city as it was in the 19th century in the way it was laid out and so uh, sorry in europe um so if you look at somewhere like paris you think oh well you think of like names of osman who uh who did things now clearly there are older places the city of london a certain still has some roman but but the architecture itself comes from then uh, from the 18th 19th century mainly so as this was German in the 19th century, then the architecture is German. That would that stands that stands the region that stands the reason. So uh, anyway, and uh, right. So Robert also if Danzig had been returned to Hitler, it's possible if there may have been no World War Two or at least delayed. Well, yes. I mean, if one, um, if uh, the the fact that uh, the British and French governments decided to hand over um, uh, or, or, or persuade the Czechs to hand over parts of Czechoslovakia, that delayed the Second World War. Um, so, uh, was that a good thing? I don't think so. Um, I think it's a World War uh, Two would have started in 1938. We at least would have had Czechoslovakia and the second largest arms factory in Europe on the Allied side. Not to mention the um, the Czech army. We might might have had Poland on the uh, on, on 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 the Allied side, but I think that would have made more sense. So uh, delaying. Uh, the war saying, OK, well, Hitler can have uh, Gdansk and then he can have the Polish, what's the Polish corridor, the parts of Germany. This wouldn't have stopped him. I mean, we know from what he said himself that um, he said, worse, the war I need now is somebody messing up my plans um, when he was comp uh, he co complaining about Munich, for example. Sorry, um, in, in August of 1939, he was complaining about Munich, which had happened uh, the previous September. So um, I, I don't think that uh, the, that would have stopped World War II. World War II would have happened anyway. Um, it might, however, have given uh, kept Britain and France out of it. I do accept that that is a possibility. Um, and. Uh, Anyway, Dennis has had the plague uh, and uh, uh, from working too many long hours. And um, uh, oh, Christopher's having a good evening. And David, sorry for being late. And uh, Christopher says some very naive thinking. And uh, David asks, was Dan Danzig badly damaged in World War II bombed? Uh, yes, it was. It was completely smashed up. It wasn't bombed very much, though. Um, it, there were bo there were bombing raids on uh, on Gdansk. Now, in the centre of Gdansk is the shipyard, and at the shipyard, U-boats were built. Now, um, uh, I, I, I feel I've got stacks of notes on this. It wasn't one of the larger shipyards, but it was. Um, because of, as far as you bought to concern, you, you just can't build them anywhere. Uh, there was a number of uh, shipyards uh, also, for example, Hamburg, Kiel, Elblong, Elbling, um, and Gdansk. And um, so, so uh, that made it a target. But the thing was, it was too far away to make regular uh, visits to it. So if you think of the difficulties getting to Berlin and you add an extra, well, there and back 800 kilometers, uh, onto it, then it was really the the I wouldn't say the extreme range, but it was a very far. So it wasn't it wasn't really possible to bomb it. Now I remember one of my teachers from school who was in planes, and he actually took on raids on uh, Königsberg uh, in Kaliningrad, so which is even further. Uh, but um, so that'd be next to what three hundred. No, 200 kilometers anyway there and back um to to uh so that 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 um but the um there was a battle for Gdansk in march of 1945 and it left it in absolute ruins not only that even today you can still see 
um, damage from the Second World War. Um, I've actually, I posted a video in 2008. Unfortunately, it wasn't. It's not very clear. And I, I wish I, I wish I'd done these things better at the time. Uh, but it, it's it, the video is quite awful. But um, but you can there. It's it's a, a island in the centre, and the damage is utterly clear now most of that because of development of the investment which has gone into uh get out largely from the private sector has completely uh, has changed it so now it's it's quite a luxurious place to live but there are still buildings which are damaged uh from the second world war and um so uh it was it, it was a smoldering heap of ruins largely uh, at the at the end because of because of this battle because of the the, the red army bombardments and the street fighting that actually took place there um so uh, david writes that chicago had a plan from 1909 yeah yeah some places did have um plans that late uh, in the united states uh, you, the, the urban planning because the this um the United States tend to be very, very clear plans, but then again, because there isn't sort of this uh, older development that went uh into into cities. Um did the Soviets do much bombing of Germany? If not, why? But uh, no, I mean less than one percent of all bombing was done by the Soviets. There were one or two strategic uh raids by the Soviets, but next to nothing. And the reason for this is because the Soviets didn't have any heavy bombers. And indeed, there was only really two countries that had any heavy bombers of any consequence in the Second World War, and that was the United Kingdom and the United States. It, Germany didn't have a heavy bomber as such. Uh, this is often used by those who are apologists for Hitler to say that, well, Hitler didn't have a long-term plan because he didn't build a heavy bomber. And... Um, uh, Having said that, if one one you know we did have a lot of other stuff um, that uh, other countries didn't have, it could there was a feeling that the bomber would always get through. Um, the fact they didn't have a heavy bomber is, however, um, some somewhat um, how should I put it? Um, uh, <laughs> um, Trying to say this a different way, um, the they had uh, the air force of the uh, Luftwaffe was much greater than those of its neighbours. So they, from the tactical side, it, it certainly did have a lot more. So the idea that it didn't have a heavy bomber uh, was really not. Um, I don't even I don't think that's a reason what uh, to suggest that Hitler wasn't planning a war. Uh, um, uh, our Christopher says I should do a video on the speculation that it was possible to bomb Auschwitz. I've actually written this, um, so so uh, I um, uh, it was not possible to bomb Auschwitz, and uh, the, the I, I've had this argument uh, with the people over the over the years, and uh, the, it's because I always ask the same question. Okay, so if it was possible to bomb Auschwitz, tell me the following: What equipment are you going to use? And uh, then I never get an answer to that. And the reason, the very reason I never get an answer for that, and the answer is because there wasn't any. Now, Auschwitz was within the, the, the it was within the extreme range. Um, okay, I mentioned Gdansk. Okay, well, this Auschwitz is at the extreme range, and that would be uh, what it's like. I'm getting up a double the distance to Berlin if it's using British bases. Not quite, but but almost. Uh, the closest bases to Auschwitz were in the south of Italy. Now, the south of Italy was uh, captured uh, in the um, uh, in the autumn of 1943, so the, the bases at Foggia came online. So, therefore, theoretically, it, it could have been done. Now, to me, a more a better target, once they had the bases at Foggia, were the uh, oil fields at Pluresti in Romania, for example. They obviously can't bomb them every day. But supposing they did bomb Auschwitz. Now, the, uh, the way that bombing um, uh, works is that uh, then is that they tried to cause a firestorm. And it was perfectly possible to cause a firestorm in an old medieval type town with a lot of timber, such as Lübeck or Dresden or Magdeburg or something. There, but if, in Auschwitz, you've got low lying, they're low buildings made uh, nearly always, well, most of them were made of brick or had brick foundations or something. and. <coughs> There was no way of causing a firestorm in, in a place like Auschwitz. And 
the very real um, thing is this, is that people would say, well, why couldn't they bomb the railway lines? Right. Now, the answer to that one is the following. Often, the Allied bombers couldn't find the Ruhr. Uh, the Ruhr, which is over 100 kilometres long and, what, about 80 or 60 kilometres uh, in depth, if they couldn't find that, travelling four to five times further and finding a railway line, which is one metre across, is, 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 is totally absurd and let's supposing that they managed we have found somebody who was a, a fantastic shot and he hit this railway line that railway line would be repaired even before the plane got back to base uh, so the losses would be uh, i i would suggest uh, far greater uh, on on the allied side um, so, the, I mean, obviously, as, as somebody who spent a large part of his life looking at the Holocaust, I, I do appreciate um, the, 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 um, the emotion in something like this. But one, the, the bombing of uh, Auschwitz was, was totally, it, it, just, it, just could, it couldn't be done. It, it, it was unrealistic. Now, the Soviets potentially could have bombed it from around... Uh, Maybe from late 1944, but but not before. Now we be say, ah, what about the photograph of the bombs falling on Auschwitz? Yes, there are photographs of bombs falling on Auschwitz. The Bühnerwerke, the uh, artificial rubber plant, which is at Monowitz, uh, Monowitz uh, was attacked, and um, it was attacked attacked at least once. And uh, yes, well, but that as a target that could that could burst into flames, cause a conflagration, and then it could get worse. So that, that, was, that was possible, um, and I accept that. Now, another thing is that the, the, an argument has been put forward that, they, okay, there were inmates in there, and the inmates themselves might have been hit. I don't think that was a... First of all, the inmates themselves said that they... they more, sorry, everyone I've heard of um, has said... And a friend of mine, um, she's now uh, she's now 90, 92, and she was in Auschwitz. And uh, she said at the time they were waving, waving at the planes. The planes couldn't see them, but um, um, and they were glad that the planes were bombing. Um, they, but um, there was uh, they they didn't care if they died. They 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 would rather they bomb the place than they might give them the chance of escaping. Um, now, when the uh, Western Allies said, yeah, well, we might have hit the inmates. Well, uh, they didn't think of the inmates when they bombed Pienemunde, uh, for example. Uh, so I, I don't accept that as an, as an, I don't accept that as an excuse. Um, right. David asks, uh, why didn't Germany have an aircraft carrier? Um, yeah, um, I think this is just because the Navy... Didn't, I think the Navy did. I don't actually know the real answer to this one. Uh, I think I don't think they saw the uh, the value of aircraft carriers um, in uh, in nineteen in nineteen thirty. Of course, that was um, not permitted by the uh, Versailles Treaty anyway. Uh, it, Germany wasn't a colonial power. It didn't have overseas possessions. It didn't have overseas interests. Unlike, for example, um, the United Kingdom, France, Italy, or the United States or Japan. And so um, they had no real reason. I mean, I've heard of things, people saying, oh, well, there was one plan. Yeah, I think there was one plan, the Großdeutschland or Deutschland or something. Um, but um, uh, I'm sorry, I can't really add much more to that one about why it didn't have an aircraft carrier. Okay, right. So, uh, so I shall be. Uh, I have done a tour around Germany and Poland, and um, and so I prepared lots and lots of things, and I thought, well, it's pretty active. I think about it. no, I hadn't actually done, hadn't sort of done uh, regular updates because if I said told people where I was, uh, particularly some of these, these uh, things that I, I, I've done. Um, then it might be, it might, it might, it might have been possible even to meet people and what have you. The is, um, I, I put up a quiz a few days ago asking about where did um, the Soviets 
and the uh, Americans meet for the first time. And the answer will be in next Friday's video because I film, went to there and filmed it. Christopher says, uh, brought up the issue due to the evidence that Roosevelt knew about Auschwitz as early as 1942. It's an obviously impossible question to ponder. Yeah, um, okay. Um, I would question uh, Christopher what he actually knew. Uh, what's it mean that he knew? He knew it existed. Uh, there was a camp there. Well, that wasn't a secret. There was a camp there. Um, by newspaper reports that there was a camp there. Um, uh, that people were being killed en masse there. Well, uh, in the, well, I think it was July 1942. Yes, it was the 29th of July 1942. There was an article uh, in a uh, newspaper about the death camp at home on Adneren. And uh, the, uh, which I'll do a video on this because I, 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 I put it on my Facebook site actually some time ago, but uh, which was largely correct. What they wrote, there was one or two things which we now know not to be correct, but 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 in general it was correct. And they got all this information now in, in so he said, Well, why couldn't they do something about it? Well, the thing is, well, what? What could they do? Um, what were the most effective bombings and most ineffective? Oh, I don't know the answer that, David. Um, what was the most effective bombing raid? Well, you get these things they made films about, like the Dam Busters and things like that. That was quite effective, but they didn't actually follow it up with more and more. Uh, I would argue this. Now, Albert Speer said the same thing, so he would he was the armaments minister, so he must have known. I would argue that. Um, the uh, bombing campaign was the most effective way of stopping a Nazi victory, a German victory, a Nazi German victory in World War II. Uh, it slowed production down. And people say, ah, but production hit a high in the summer of 1944. Yes, it did. That's true. But what would have hit with, hit without uh, this? Um, and I, I would also argue something which... Um, mm, which I don't I know anyone will say this, but if you've got one plane which goes across a country, just one mosquito flies across, it's a nuisance, and it sets off alarms everywhere, and people are unable to get to work the following day because they're in the shelters or because it, they, they were kept up at night, uh, then that is an effective um, use of one pilot. So one pilot can get 10 million people in, or uh, well, two pilots in a mosquito. Uh, okay, plus a bit of ground crew. All right, 10 people. Um, you can get 10 million people scurrying into shelters, five, half of whom may have to go to work the following day, and a good, a good proportion of whom are working in the armaments industry. I think that is highly effective. Um, if uh, there's then a, a bombing raid uh, which stops uh, weapons being produced, um, uh, then I think that that is effective. Um, sometimes you see things is that uh, with, with air bombing, um, the, the thing is, what about the civilians who die? Well, we have a problem with this is because is it right to... For example, to shoot an enemy tank, if you say yes, OK, is it right to shoot the person who is making the tank? Um, and if the answer to that is yes, then you have to would then logically say it's right to um, have area bombing of uh, civilian areas where uh, tanks are being produced. And so, therefore, um, uh, bearing in mind that it was, of course, the Nazis who started the war and what the Nazi policies were, um, to hit in trying to knock out production of um, weapons, largely, but also other things which could be related to weapons, such as, you know, obviously, a, if you knock a coal mine out, for example, and it's the coal mine which makes the coal, gets goes into the steel mill, which goes into the making of the tank, then it's correct. Um, anyway, uh, right, David says Roosevelt didn't need newspaper articles, he had detailed reports, yes, but um, uh, I think you uh, might agree that uh, those reports 
uh, come uh, newspaper articles uh, would come from reports or from somebody. So, um, uh, so Roosevelt might not have needed a detailed report, uh, a newspaper article. Uh, he may have seen something, but something like this uh, relating to mass killings is not a military secret, unless it's a military secret where they got the information from, such as things like Enigma. Uh, then, um, uh, uh, then, then, then. <laughs> um, I don't actually see the difference between a detailed report and a newspaper article because one, the two would come out together. But the question is this, as I said earlier, it's what did he know? Okay, thanks very much for listening. I can see that, I mean, it wasn't a particularly good uh, connection earlier and I can see it's now getting worse. I'm actually connected via my mobile phone. I try today to do on my other channel a uh, live broadcast from outside. So I wanted to show you the view, and uh, it it didn't it didn't work for me. It was YouTube messing me around. But anyway, so I'm using my computer, which has got a not very good webcam, and uh, the the computer doesn't have to be ten years old in January. That's for why I bought it. And although it has been updated several times, but the webcam is still the same one. Uh, certainly, I do appreciate when I do a video on my um, on my mobile uh, phone, uh, it comes out much nicer. Anyway, so hello, Go Navy. Thanks very much, everybody, for being here. And uh, next, I'll try and do some more of videos like this when, as and when I get the, I get I get the idea. So all the best from me in Mikoshevo, Poland. And thanks for watching. Thanks, David. I'm the other David. I'm Go and uh, Christopher and uh, Robert and Dennis. Thank you. Bye.